Hey guys, it's Casey, and welcome back for another Unreal tutorial. So, in the last tutorial that I did yesterday, actually, I showed how we can kind of optimize our math inside of Blueprints. And I kind of showed what not to do, and I kind of want to take that a step further, and I want to look at it from a C++ perspective. And even more so, I want to show kind of what my workflow is when I make games, and kind of my reasoning behind it. So for me, personally, I love using Blueprints. I could write a game in C++, but personally, I find I work a bit faster in Blueprints, I can debug easier in Blueprints. All in all, I, I really love the Blueprint workflow, and I fully understand the repercussions of using Blueprints, which is kind of efficiency and speed and performance when you, when you reach a final game. And that's where I kind of come back in, in the end, and I look at the different parts of my game, mostly the expensive things that are on tick, and I move them over to C++. And if I pull up a simple little actor right here, so this is just an actor, and this is a turret, this is simply just some simple turret code, some simple turret logic, and if we kind of just analyze this, what what really happens and what we're really looking for with efficiency and blueprints, and the reason why blueprints are not so efficient, I think the numbers is that normal blueprints are about 10x slower than if they existed inside of C++. If you, in theory, had this turret, all of this code, in blueprints and then you moved all of it over the C++, in theory the C++ version of this actor would be about 10 times faster. And that's just something that you have to live with if you are willing to use blueprints. However, we can kind of bridge that gap in that the reason why blueprints are slow is that every time we, we run one of these nodes in one of kind of like a set world rotation, what's really happening here is that when we call set world rotation, what it's doing is it's going from Blueprints down to C++, doing what it needs in C++, and then we come back to Blueprints, and then it comes to the next node, and it's a branch. And then I believe all the same, it goes down to C++, it does what it needs in C++, and it comes back up to Blueprints. And then we go to the next node, and so forth. And the reason why it ends up being slow is because we're constantly going back down to C++, doing what we need to do, coming back up to Blueprints, going back down and going back up. That's how I've heard it referred to as by, by Epic is that they, they call it you're going down into C++, and I think that's a good way of looking at it, is that with Blueprints, we're constantly hopping, hopping back and forth, and that's just kind of the downside of Blueprints. So the kind of cool part is, is that we don't have to write an entire game in C++. If we can find specific things, especially things that are running on, on tick, and move those calculations over the C++, we might be able to reduce the amount that we're going back and forth a lot. So a good example of this would be like, like here. So when I want to find a target with this turret, what it does is it does a trace to find all of the actors within its radius, and then if we find with, with that like array of hits of all those actors that we just hit, all those, what well, we're searching for are pawns, all those pawns that we just hit, what I do is I sort through all of them inside of a function, and inside this, this function, what we're really doing is we're looping through all the things we hit, and we're checking to see how far away they are, and then in the end, after looping through all of them, what we spit out the end once we're completed is whoever is closest, and then that's going to end up being the target for our turret, and then with that target, it can execute its shooting code. So one of the things that I think we could optimize here is what if this entire function right here, what if this find closest function what if it existed completely inside of C++ so that instead of in the side of this function, for us, maybe there's 10 targets within our range, we might be looping through all of these nodes 10 times over until we spit out a target. You can see how we could maybe optimize that down just by simply writing this function in C++, and then all of a sudden to find a target, maybe we're only going down into C++ maybe like four times or three times instead of going three plus however much we're looping, right? So that's like a really clear situation where moving this to C++ could really be effective. And that's what I want to show real quick, is that this is completely a fresh blueprint project. I simply made that actor, I put some code inside of it. There is currently not a single drop of C++ added to this project. And what I can do is I can do up here in the top left, I can do file, I can add a new C++ class. And what we're going to do is we're going to make a parent for that turret. And, that, and that's what we're going to do right here. So I want to add an actor. We're going to move it. And I'm just going to call this turret par parent C. What we call it doesn't really matter. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to create this class. And now what it's going to do is it's going to convert this blueprint project over to C++. So this is normally what I do at the very end of a project. 
I've thought and I've considered kind of changing my workflow and adding C++ sooner instead of at the end, but I found that even if you have an actor full of variables, you have it full of code, it's linked everywhere. Parenting a existing blueprint actor to a C++ actor, I ran into no issues with it. It's been completely smooth for me. I have had not a single road bump doing so. And that's kind of what I want to show real quick is how easy it is at the end of a game when you've already finished everything, we can go back and that we can convert our project to C++. We can reparent some actors and I'll show you why we're going to do that. And that we can add some simple C++ code, some simple functions, maybe some new variables, and we can potentially make our blueprint actors a lot more performant performant just by moving some of the expensive chunks into C++. And what enables us to do is that I personally, for me, since I love using blueprints, I can write my entire game in blueprints and then come back in the end and just do chunks of C++ where I want to. And I, I think that's one of the most powerful parts of UE4 for me, is that it enables me to move very quickly, very fast in how I want to work instead of staring at a C++ document all day. So with this added, it opened up my C++. So let's see if we can navigate to it. So where is it? Source. So here we go. So let's find our actor. Let's see. There it is. So here's our header and here's our CPP. So, oops, that's not the right one. There we go. So in here, this is our new turret parent C. And what we can do is that with this added, if we go back inside of our project, I can go into this eyeball in the bottom and then I can do show C++ classes. And with that enabled, I now have this folder down here that has my new C++ class. And what I can actually do is that we can go into our into that actor, which I saved it in here. Here we go. Here's my turret. And inside of the turret, what I can do is I can go into the class settings. And now instead of the parent class just being actor, we can search for our turret. And there it is, our turret parent C. And now all of a sudden, just with that box selected, all of a sudden, this C++ class is now the parent of our turret here. So something to, to realize is that one of the downsides of doing C++ post fact is that none of these blueprint variables are going to be accessible in C. Th that's just one of the downsides, but it's fairly easy to convert over. Like let's say we wanted to change our range over to be a C++ variable. Well, what we can do is inside C++, I can just do inside my public. I don't really want to make this video much about writing C++. I'm just going to try and explain the workflow. We can make a new U property and we can make this um, blueprint read write, and that we can make this a float, and that we will call this range C. And that by default, let's just like set it to 500. And now if we build, we should get access to this variable down in blueprints. So it's gonna build really quickly. Hopefully this is a very quick process for us. And the reason why I do this is that we might need to access this variable inside of our C++ functions along with blueprints. And that's why we write it in C++ is because then we get access to it in C++. But then using this tag of blueprint read write, we also get access to this variable inside of blueprints. So there's no hiccup for us. So that's one of the cool things there. And that the next thing we're gonna show once, once this compiles and, I and we can look at our property is that we can write functions just as, as we do in C++ or in blueprints, we can write functions here in C++ and that we can make them then callable down inside of our blueprints. So I'm not sure why, why is this taking so long to build? It's just the first time build, there we go, okay. All right guys, sorry about that. I had to relaunch my project. For some reason it wasn't finding the link between Unreal and the C++ file until I restarted the project. But now what we did is we went and we created our, a new variable and we're, what we're basically doing is we're making a new range float and we're gonna replace our existing range with it. And with this eyeball selected, if we show our inherited variables, you can see here that now inside of these variables, I have turret parent C and we have access to our new range here. And you can see how if I just, this is what I've done with my games is that if I wanted to replace a variable and make it accessible in C, I make it in C and I just do a find and I find the existing um, parts of that old variable, I replace it, I delete the old variable, and now this variable will work exactly the same as it did in blueprints, but now I also have access to it inside of C. So that's one thing that I would do. And the next thing I would do is that I would function some things. So let's move, let's like, quote unquote, move over this, this find closest function. So what I would do is we would open it up and I can make a new U function and we can make this blueprint callable inside this function, let's make it return in a, let's make it return a pointer to an actor and we will call it the closest target in that, no, actually, oops, closest 
target. There we go. And that what we want this to take is we want this to take a T array of is it hit results? F hit results. There we go. And that we can call this our hits. And that I believe we should be good there. Is it not like that? Nope, there we go. So then now with this, we can get our definition. There we go. And now with this, essentially what we could do is we could just do like blah, 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 like all of our calc. And at the end, we could return We could return an actor. Like we, we could re make our return actor. Oops. Let's do a actor star is our return actor. And that we can just make that a null pointer. And that what we could return is that after we do all those calculations, we could set our return actor variable to be kind of the result of that calculation, and we can return it. And now what we could do is essentially this function would work exactly like it does in Blueprints, but now if we moved over the calculation to C++, it's just that much faster. And I'm sorry the, the builds are slow. I don't know why it's taking so long to build basically an empty C++. And that now, if we right click, and I believe it was find closest target, you can see here that we have the C++ function, and we can make it work exactly the same like it did in Blueprints. It takes the same inputs, gives the same output, but instead, this function should now probably run 10x faster. So with that shown, that we can move our variables over very easily to C++, we can move our functions over very easily to C++, we can reparent our existing actors over the C++ seamlessly, kind of the question now becomes, well, what do we convert over? Well, as I said, it's kind of how many times we jump back and forth is kind of the issue. This this find closest target that we're doing is kind of a nice thing to move over, right? Because if when we think about it as a function, our old find closest, we're giving an input and all we care about is the output. We don't really care about everything inside of here being in, C in, in blueprints. What we really care is as long as our output is the same, as long as the input is the same, it can convert over very nicely in that we can end up saving ourselves all of this calculation. There's some things that aren't worth moving over though, right? Like, do we really care about moving branches over? Not really. Do we care about like moving some of this stuff, like this branch of a Boolean? No, we don't care. But sh would we care about maybe moving this calculation over? This could be useful, right? Because instead of checking to see if one of our Booleans is true or false, now we're doing some math. So this would be a type of calculation that we would like to move over the C++. This setting the rotation of our turret, this is definitely something where moving this over the C++ would be really nice. And this would literally just be, we could move our target variable over to over to C++ if we wanted to and then we could just return a we could just return a, a rotator if we wanted to like like that and that's the thing is that these functions we can just simply just look at their existing blueprint code and it becomes so easy to just write it over and then move it over and but some of the other things spawning an actor that doesn't like that's what I'm trying to say here is that we don't need to move everything over you can if you want to really get a lot of performance but even just moving things like this over and like functioning some of this stuff and that we could function this right here and move this over the C++ th this is kind of what I'm trying to show is this is how I work in Unreal I like to work in blueprints I make most of my entire game in blueprints, and then I come back and I ask myself, what's the expensive stuff? Well, the expensive stuff is usually stuff on tick. Like, say we had something on begin play of this actor, and let's just say we, we ran some code here. Is it really worth moving this code with over the C++? Code that would be ran once at the first tick of our turret? Not really, because the only performance we're getting is going to be for one frame. However, things that we're running constantly, like stuff on tick, maybe our AI, like these are very important things because if we have all of our tick stuff performing five to ten times faster, that, that can be a lot of performance that we get back in theory if our game is bottlenecking on the CPU, that is. So that's just what I wanted to show here, guys. Adding C++ to your project can be very easy. Reparenting your existing actors, adding some variables, adding some functions, it's really easy. I encourage you guys to at least learn basic C++. I am by far not a master of C++. The only language that I would say I've actually learned properly is Python several years ago. I've never had any formal education on C++. And if you can master blueprints, which is something I did before I really dove into C++, C++ logic just becomes like very easy. All, all you're really learning is syntax, and if you can nail the syntax, a lot of blueprints carries over, and then you just need to learn about subjects like pointers and stuff. But that's my workflow. I Maybe this isn't something for you. I would be careful sometimes about adding C++ to projects if you're working in a team. I've had some weird quirks 
with adding C++ while using Perforce. It wasn't anything major or anything like that, but it took like a little bit of a learning hump because it behaves a little awkwardly with Perforce. But that's just source control when working in a team. But that's it, guys. I hope I, I hope I showed you some of my workflow. I hope it makes sense. I encourage th th those of you that don't know C++, try to learn a little bit of it. Learn a little bit of the syntax because at the end of your game, you can save yourself a lot of performance just by spending a few days in C++ and converting over some of your things on Tick. And once again, we could write this entire thing on Tick if we wanted to. We have our Tick here in C++. Where is it? We have our Tick down here. We could move the entire thing there, but honestly, you don't have to. As long as you remove the complex things, and especially your math, math calculations, stuff like that, you can still get a lot of performance back. It's really easy. It's simple. It's seamless for me. I've never had an issue doing something like this, so... I hope you guys learned something, and maybe we'll do some more in-depth C++ tutorials in the future, but I hope this is a little tip to get you guys some performance, and I'll see you guys in the next video.